The movie begins with Sit's introduction, a high school senior student. He actively avoids popularity at school, preferring to spend his days there without any trouble. He has developed three rules for this purpose. The first rule involves maintaining as much silence as possible, as he believes that silence never leads a person into problems. His second rule focuses on avoiding attention and the spotlight at school. He engages in low-key roles such as assisting at hockey games, serving as a backup in school plays, and joining the annual video game team. His final rule involves steering clear of the school's infamous bully Chuck. Chuck, known for his violence, beats anyone who irritates him and records these violent encounters for his YouTube channel. In one incident, Chuck nearly killed someone, but his wealthy father enabled him to evade legal consequences. Later, we meet Jim, Sid's best friend. Jim aspires to be a social media star and disagrees with Sid's lifestyle and self-imposed rules. While chatting, Sid spots Tiff, a beautiful girl he has long had a crush on. He remembers their last interaction when they were eight years old, dancing on the ice. Now hesitant, he refrains from confessing his feelings due to her relationship with Chuck. Following their chat, Sid and Jim walk through the garden, where they run into Luna, their third friend. It's clear that Jim and Luna have feelings for each other, but they deny it and often argue. After school, Sid comes home to find his two mothers waiting for him. They tell him about a letter from the school and the upcoming homecoming party. Sid expresses his disinterest in attending, but his mother insists it's a memorable event he will appreciate later in life. Yet Sid remains uninterested, pointing out he doesn't even have a date for the occasion. That weekend, Sid spends his time playing video games. At school, the lack of sleep from staying awake for 72 hours starts to test him. His sleep deprivation begins to affect everything from his eating habits to his dwindling energy for sports. In a state of fatigue, he accidentally insults Chuck. In response, Chuck violently attacks him in front of their classmates. A teacher eventually steps in, but Sid, still not mastering his self-control, disrespects the teacher in front of everyone. He has violated the three rules he set for himself. Chuck then vows to kill Sid the next time they meet. In the following scene, Sid wakes up in a bed with Jim beside him, telling him that he has been unconscious for seven hours. Jim also informs him that the school has suspended Chuck for two weeks and mandated his attendance in an anger management program. This suspension means Chuck will return to school on the day of the homecoming party. On hearing this, Sid grows terrified, convinced that the end of the school year will also mark the end of his life. He feels frustrated with himself for breaking his own rules. The next day, he attends school with the thought that his life will end in two weeks and that he cannot depart from this world without having enjoyed anything. In a sex education class, later on, a girl is presenting on the topic of abstinence. Sid rises to his feet, offering a counterpoint. He respectfully suggests that experiencing intimate desires is a natural part of life and that embracing them should not be a source of fear. He goes on to propose that each person in the class might be grappling with these feelings yet might be hesitant to express them. The students impressed by his respectful audacity started to share their perspectives openly. Following this, Sid exits the classroom feeling a mix of pride and surprise at his unexpected display of courage. Concurrently, Jim feels a sense of pride towards Sid, who has now become a figure of inspiration for his peers by expressing himself candidly. Sid then receives a message from an unknown sender. It's from a girl who has admired him from afar and has now gathered the courage to contact him. She commends him on his bravery during the class, and Sid feels pleased to have connected with someone who appreciates him. Post-school, Sid heads to his job delivering pizzas. After the shift, he joins Jim for a fishing session. He shares with Jim that Chuck is due to return in a fortnight and fears Chuck might harm him. Consequently, Sid decides he needs to compile a list of things to accomplish before potentially facing this peril. With only 14 days remaining, Sid attends school the next day, feeling fearless for the first time. His peers treat him like a hero, and Jim informs him about the school's buzz regarding him. At that moment, Sid receives a message from an unknown girl who claims she's watching him from afar. Scanning the area, he spots Tiff approaching and concludes she must be sending the messages. Tiff walks up to Sid and apologizes for Chuck's behavior. She reveals her breakup with Chuck, which pleases Sid. She then inquires if he plans to attend the hockey game that night, and he confirms his attendance. The story then introduces Eric, the hockey team's star player, whose father and coach censure him for poor performance. During halftime, with the team trailing, the coach berates everyone in the locker room, especially his son. Sid, noticing Eric's distress, decides to approach him. Eric confesses his dislike for hockey and his aspiration to become a dancer. Sid reassures him that opting out of playing is okay. Subsequently, Sid dons Eric's gear and takes his place outside. Initially terrified and underperforming, Sid recalls his past prowess in ice skating and considering his impending demise resolves to enjoy himself and exert maximum effort. 
Playing expertly, Sid leads the team to victory. When he removes his helmet, the revelation of his true identity stuns everyone. Impressed, the coach offers him a spot on the team. Just then, the mysterious girl compliments Sid's excellent performance through a text. The next day brings the presidential elections, and we meet Megan, a candidate. She approaches her classmates for an assistant, but they mock her. Feeling empathy, Sid volunteers to assist Megan, who accepts due to a lack of alternatives. Later, Sid purchases drugs from a student dealer at school. He then discovers Eric has joined the dance team, a decision that delights him. At night, Sid continues his chats with the mysterious girl, still oblivious to her real identity. As the student union president election day arrives, Megan is a bundle of nerves about her chances. However, she inadvertently consumes Sid's drugs, mistaking them for mints, panicking about the potential impact on her candidacy. To show solidarity, Sid also takes drugs, wanting to reassure her. During their speeches, the drug effects cause Megan and Sid to lose their composure. They start rapping and dancing on stage, eliciting laughter from the other students. The following day at the school play, Sid sees Tiff rehearsing with a bully named John. He cunningly places something in John's makeup box, causing him to get a pink eye and withdraw from performing. Consequently, Sid lands the role and joyfully serves with Tiff. Post-show, he seizes the moment to ask Tiff to go to a party. In the next scene, Sid, Jim, and Luna arrive at Tiff's house. While Jim and Luna continue their usual bickering, an excited Sid greets Tiff. Together, they depart for a classmate's party. At the party, Sid and Tiff thoroughly enjoy each other's presence. However, Chuck suddenly appears, confronting Tiff about her lack of response to his calls. He got an early release from his anger management class. Chuck attempts to take Tiff away, but Sid intervenes and holds her hand. This action angers Chuck, who threatens Sid with death. Suddenly, Chuck's car bursts into flames, forcing him to scramble to extinguish the fire. Meanwhile, Sid and Tiff flee to a forest. There, Sid makes a move to kiss her, but Tiff hesitates and admits she does not harbor romantic feelings for him. She confesses her ongoing love for Chuck and apologizes to Sid for misleading him. Sid, shocked, realizes he mistook Tiff for the mysterious person texting him. Tiff clarifies she doesn't have his number, leaving Sid heartbroken. He returns home with Jim and Luna, feeling dejected. The next day, Sid invites the mysterious girl to meet him but she declines, citing her lack of courage. Sid then stands up and tells his friends that they should disconnect from the virtual world and explore life beyond the computer screen. He emphasizes that life offers more than video games, impressing his friends. Just as he receives a text from the mysterious girl, he spots a girl in the room holding a phone and giggling. He realizes she is the sender and tries to talk to her but she flees. He eventually catches up to her and she introduces herself as Katie. Despite her embarrassment, Sid feels thrilled and asks her on a date. After school, Sid and Katie embark on a date and quickly develop a fondness for each other. Soon they share a kiss and decide to start a relationship. One day, Jim encounters Chuck and his friends in a car while walking his dog. They offer Jim a ride and propose filming a video together. Dreaming of fame, Jim accepts without much thought. The following day, Sid arrives at school and is shocked to discover the student's anger towards him. A student shows him a video revealing Jim drunkenly divulging Sid's secrets. In the video, Jim discloses Sid's last wishes list, drug use, how Sid gave John the pink eye causing him to quit a role at the last minute, and Sid's new relationship after Tiff's rejection. Consequently, the students hate Sid, resulting in his removal from the video game and hockey teams. Additionally, Meaden loses her position as class president due to alleged drug use and blames Sid. Sid attempts to talk to Katie only to find she has not attended school that day. Later at home, Sid encounters Jim who attempts to apologize. However, Sid, still hurt, blames him for revealing his secrets for fame. Sid then retreats to his room trying to apologize to Katie but she refuses to forgive him. The next day, Luna visits Sid at his house and pleads with him to forgive Jim, explaining that Jim didn't mean to insult him. The homecoming party is approaching and Sid is reluctant to attend, but Luna encourages him to be brave like before. She also admits that she was the one who set fire to Chuck's car. After much convincing from Luna, Sid finally decides to attend the party. On the day of the homecoming party, Sid and Jim finally reconcile. Sid then approaches Katie, who refuses to speak with him still. Sid apologizes, explaining that he never meant to hurt her and confessing that she is the only girl he's ever loved. Realizing that Chuck could kill him at any moment, he says goodbye and walks away. Later, Chuck arrives at the party and violently attacks Sid, causing him to lose consciousness. After some time, Sid wakes up in the hospital with Jim at his side. Jim shares that he too was attacked and starts telling what happened after Sid lost consciousness. In a flashback, we see that Jim also shot Chuck to defend his friend, and then Luna joined in as well. 
After this, Eric began beating his father and stating his dream to be a dancer. The party descended into chaos as different groups started fighting with each other. After this, Sid departs the room and finds the hospital full of the rest of the students. Meanwhile, we notice that Jim and Luna have eventually expressed their feelings and are dating now. Chuck has terrible damage as well, and he is arrested for what he did. The rest of the students are all relieved that Sid is still alive after all the beatings. Still, he ignored everyone else and went to Katie, asking her to forget everything that happened and start afresh. She agrees, and the two start to dance together in the hospital hallway as the movie comes to an end.